Hey, folks, beautiful morning, isn't it? It sure yeah. is. And we're going to take advantage of it. Do you know if the shoreline's flat like this all the way around? Yep, it's an easy walk with some beautiful flowers just on the other side. I was just there this morning. Okay, thanks a lot. Don't let the big one get away. Uh, I won't, if I could ever catch him. Now, you have a beautiful walk. Police, may I help you? We've, we've just been robbed. We got out what of you have just seen is a reenactment of a crime that is used here at the Federal Law Enforcement Training right Center for the purpose of final practical exercise evaluations. During the running of these final exercises, you as evaluators will be required to grade student performance within the scope of this or one of several other scenarios involving such topical crimes as rape, theft of timber, or the killing of endangered species. This program will deal specifically with the evaluation procedures surrounding the burglary from a motor home scenario we've just witnessed. The practical exercise you evaluate may be different from the one discussed here. However, it's important to understand the basis for each team evaluation is common to all the exercises administered. Each scenario has been designed to measure a student's proficiency in a number of specific skills. These skills include the ability to employ effective interview techniques, to utilize appropriate radio procedures, to employ rules of officer safety and survival, to utilize proper arrest and search techniques, to properly collect evidence and obtain information for field notes, to demonstrate care and compassion for victims, to understand the concept of deadly force, and to demonstrate knowledge of search and seizure, the laws of arrest, and the Miranda warning. The practical exercise your students will participate in will test their proficiency in each of these areas. It is your job to evaluate how successful they are in these endeavors. The day of the final practical exercise, the evaluator's first piece of business is to meet with the role-playing staff. It is important for all role players to fully understand the dynamics of the exercise in which they will participate, as well as their specific role within the scenario. Our evaluator ensures that they've all read their instruction sheet and understand exactly what they are supposed to do. She also reviews the proper sequence of events so that everyone understands the timeline. Finally, she checks to make sure that each role player has been issued the props that will be required during the exercise. In this case, the fisherman should have an operational fishing pole and tackle box. The burglar should be issued the items that will be reported as stolen, those items being a video camera, a still camera, three credit cards, and $250 of PE money. Once our evaluator is satisfied that all role players are prepared for the exercise, she instructs them to prepare the crime scene while she returns to the classroom to meet her team of students. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good morning. Okay. Is this team 210? Yes, ma'am. Okay, my name is Diane. Upon meeting with her students, our evaluator briefs them on the guidelines of the practical exercise. I am. 
She ensures that a team leader has been chosen and that the leader has designated an evidence technician and a photographer. Each team member should then be briefed on the responsibilities of his or her position. In addition, radio channels should be coordinated and the radio should be checked for proper operation. Once the evaluator is satisfied that all team members are prepared, she releases them to a designated patrol area to wait for further instructions. Our evaluator then returns to our role players to inspect the preparation of the crime scene. She ensures that the burglar has left adequate footprints from his car to the motorhome and then supervises the preparation of the burglar's tire marks for the students to discover. When the role players are in place, the investigative team is dispatched to the victim's location. Upon the team's arrival, the evaluator should judge their technique in four specific areas. The approach, the identification process, the interview, and the collection of evidence. Hi there. You the gentleman who called the police? Yes, I am. You okay, sir? Yeah, I'm fine. No, I'm we, both, fine. We, we both are. We're both okay, fine. Good. good. I'm okay. Officer Reynolds. This is Officer Hollins. Right. What's your name, sir? Overall, the approach should be evaluated based upon the team's awareness and attention to safety. Are you doing all right? Uh, I'm a little shaky. You're a little shaky? Yeah. It's all right. Just take a deep The second area of evaluation is the identification process. The evaluator should note whether the auto ID for the motorhome is run correctly and that personal IDs for both victims are checked. In addition, the team should ascertain if there are any outstanding wants or warrants out on either of them. Once the identifications have been accomplished, the team should move on to full interviews of both burglary victims. The evaluator also observes if the team is administering psychological first aid to both the man and the woman. She evaluates the actual interview process, including how the students maintain control of the situation, how they complete the interviews utilizing the prescribed five steps of interviewing, and if they get all the required information. While the victim interviews are taking place, the team's evidence technician should make a careful inspection of the motor home. The evaluator should check to see if the student okay, is careful not to destroy any evidence. And then, well, rather than have the student go through the lengthy process of a full inspection, she can ask the student to stipulate what her inspection would entail. The student's answer should demonstrate her knowledge of the requirement for latent fingerprints, the collection, logging, tagging, and packaging of any evidence, the measurement and sketching of the crime scene, and the need for detailed photographs. Is there anything else you can remember about the morning, Mr. Lyons? The interviews of the victims have been completed, and it's time for the team to move on in their investigation. Here, the evaluator should inquire where they're headed to ensure they're moving in the right direction. What's next? Uh, well, we're going to finish up here, and then we're going to head over to Clear Lake. Mr. and Mrs. Lyons say that the only time that left the vehicle alone was when they went for a walk around the shore. They said that there's a fisherman over there, so we're going to follow him over and see if we can't find something out. Okay, and I'll meet you over there. Okay, great. So you ready? Just head over to Clear Lake now and we'll follow. Leaving the team behind to complete their investigation, our evaluator moves ahead to the lake. She is careful to park a good distance from the area where the motor home was parked earlier to ensure her tire tracks do not destroy any evidence that may have been left there. She alerts the fisherman that the team is on its way and then positions herself to evaluate the next step of the exercise. As the team arrives on the scene, the evaluator notes that they were careful not to disturb the crime scene and once again, position their vehicles for maximum advantage and safety. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Lyons, is this the area where you were parked? Yeah, it is, just about the same spot right there. And the fisherman is still right over there, same guy. Okay, good. What I'm gonna have you do right now is go with Lisa and inspect the area where you were parked. Lisa, would you take the lines and go and inspect where they were parked this morning? Carl, would you inspect the truck, please? Okay, Diane, here with me. The evaluator notes that the team uses their training and diversity as they move toward the fisherman, who may be Hello, a witness you, or a potential suspect. Hi, I'm Tom, this is Diane. I'd like to ask a few questions, if we may. Okay. What's your name, sir? Steve Jones. Mr. Jones, do you have any um, ID of any type? Sure. Can I take a look at it Following moment? established procedure, one of the team members breaks off to inspect the fisherman's vehicle. And I want you to be 
while the evidence technician moves toward the crime scene. The other team members approach the fisherman using the combat L position and efficiently use established identification procedures. The evaluator notes that as the identification and interview of the witness begins, the team member who moved to the pickup truck cautiously inspects the interior. As a safety precaution, he then radios dispatch for an auto ID. In the meantime, the evidence tech has been working with the victims for additional information and has also discovered some tire marks and footprints that could both be solid pieces of evidence. Can you tell me, did you see anything strange happen around the camp right after the couple left? Sure did. That old couple came out and went for a walk around the lake, and I was fishing here. But then out of the corner of my eye, I see someone come out from inside the camper. It struck me as strange, but I didn't see him go in there. Must have had my back turned or something. But then he comes out with a box or a briefcase or something, and he's moving real fast. He jumps in his car and he pulls out. It struck me as strange, like I said, so I wrote his license plates down. You have his license plate number. May I say that, Mr. Jones? Great, thank you. Okay. Here you go, Diane. You want to check that out? All right. Well, was there anything else that you The interview with the fisherman the has uncovered a solid lead. Was, make, model. The evaluator notes that the team leader continues his questioning of the fisherman's recollection of the incident and description of the suspect and his car, while the other team member radios dispatch for an auto ID on the license plate they have just been given. I got an NCIC on the license and the plate. Uh, Steve's fine and the plate's a local. It's a couple of miles from here. All right, great. Mr. Jones, thank you very much. You've been very helpful. Um, here's my card. If you can think of anything else, please don't hesitate to call. Okay. All right. Our team leader completes his interview with the witness, and the evaluator notes that he thanks him for his help and gives him a business card with a phone number so the witness can contact him later. The evaluator notes that the investigation is going very well at the crime scene and that the team is on the right track for the next step of the exercise. She leaves the area in order to be in position to evaluate the team's drive-by of the suspect's residence. At the suspect's residence, the evaluator positions herself so that she can watch her team execute the drive-by. She notes that according to established procedures, the team drives by the residence at a casual pace, taking no action that could call attention to its presence. She sees that the team photographer is able to very discreetly take a picture of the suspect's car in the driveway, which will help them in obtaining the search warrant. In addition, the team only makes one pass, not wanting to raise any suspicion at all. Satisfied with their performance, the evaluator heads back to the crime scene. I see you finished the tire cast. Yeah, as soon as Tom gets here, we're ready to go. Oh, here he comes now. How'd it go? Real well, actually. We verified the address, and Diane got some pretty good pictures. We're going to head over to the jail now and write up a search warrant. Yeah, but first I want to get some pictures of the crime scene. OK, you do that, and I'll meet you both over at the jail. OK. Upon arrival at the jail, the team gets the necessary forms from the jailer so they can prepare the affidavit for a search warrant. Here, the evaluator looks for organization in the material that the team has collected for the affidavit. She notes that they carefully fill out the form for a search warrant and are very thorough in their attached probable cause document. Upon completion of the affidavit, the team presents it to a member of the center legal staff who is acting as assistant U.S. attorney. He will check the documents for accuracy, marking any mistakes for correction. I'm going to initial off on these forms then. When he is satisfied that they are legal and proper, he authorizes the team to present the affidavit to the magistrate for a search warrant. Our team's affidavit is approved, and their next stop is the center's legal department, where a member of the staff is acting as magistrate. Although it's the magistrate's sole responsibility to approve the affidavit for a warrant, the evaluator accompanies the team to observe their actions. During her review, the magistrate may oftentimes ask questions regarding the case and the investigation. 
Lake National Park and the, the evaluator should Florida. note how the team members sure, respond to these questions and if they're able to demonstrate an understanding of the law regarding and their case. All right, we got the search warrant. Just come over here for a second. I just want to talk to you before you get going. Once the warrant has right been here. issued, the evaluator okay. should note how the team so plans to execute it. Is everyone aware of the specifics of the warrant? Has each team member been briefed on his or her responsibilities during the operation? Do they all know what they are looking for? And have they been reminded of the need for caution and safety? The evaluator should pay attention to how the team leader handles these subjects and how the team responds. Our evaluator accompanies her team to the suspect's residence and observes how they execute a safe approach to the door. Special officer, search warrant, open the door now! All right, so step back, we have a warrant. Wait, I want you to go huh? sit in that chair right there. Well, all right. In addition, when the suspect answers the door, the evaluator notes that the team leader announces the purpose of their visit and shows the suspect the search warrant as they enter the house. The team leader keeps control of the conversation and does not allow the suspect to evade the purpose of the interview. In the meantime, our two other team members have been searching the house for the stolen property listed on the warrant. The evaluator notices that they have been employing proper room search techniques and have systematically been searching from one room to the next. She is on hand when one of the team members discovers the video camera and the still camera in the bottom drawer of a bedroom dresser. Bingo. Does it check out? That's the one. All right. Hey, Tom. Having found the stolen property in the suspect's possession, probable cause has been satisfied, and the team leader immediately places the suspect under arrest. Our evaluator is looking for the proper demonstration of several arrest techniques. She finds that the team is able to maintain control of the suspect because they have positioned themselves properly. In addition, handcuffs are administered in a quick and professional manner. Third, placing the suspect into custody, the team performs a thorough search of his person. As a result of that search, the team recovers the three stolen credit cards and $250 in cash. The evaluator notes that the team leader correctly judges the need for the Miranda warning and administers it shortly after the arrest. A copy of the warrant is also left at the house. Now that the arrest has been made, the team must transport the prisoner back to the jail. Our evaluator is looking for proper techniques in this area as well. In addition, it is noted that the seats are clear of any clutter and that the prisoner is securely fastened into the seat with a seat belt. Once the prisoner is secure, he is transported back to the jail for booking. Upon entering the jail with the prisoner, the team correctly remembers to turn off all radios and to render safe and stow all firearms in their designated storage compartment. The evaluator notes that they quickly and efficiently guide the prisoner through jail processing. His handcuffs are removed according to procedure. And then he is searched again for contraband or weapons. His personal belongings are collected and listed on a receipt. He is then photographed by the jailer. In the meantime, our evaluator notes that the evidence technician is going through the proper procedures for verifying the stolen property. She checks equipment serial numbers and credit card account numbers against a list provided by the victims and discovers that there is a match. Okay, now I want you to relax. Our evaluator catches up with the prisoner to find he has already been photographed and is in the process of being fingerprinted. She sees that the student manages the fingerprinting session according to procedure. Once the prisoner is in his cell, the evaluator notes that the team meets up in the back office to finish up with the processing. She looks on as they complete the criminal complaint, the fingerprint card, 
and all other paperwork involved in the arrest. Excuse me, please, sir. Would you check this criminal complaint form? Yes, yeah, sure. You guys are back. Once they have way. completed yes, their work, they Can carry you, uh, the criminal complaint to the assistant yes, U.S. attorney. Our evaluator observes as the AUSA reviews the complaint for accuracy and consistency, marking any mistakes for correction. If he is satisfied with the documents, he will approve them for presentation to the magistrate. With the approved criminal complaint in hand, our team retrieves the prisoner from his cell. The evaluator looks on as the handcuffs are properly reapplied and the prisoner is prepared for transportation to the office of the magistrate. I want you to put your left hand up against the wall. Upon arrival at the magistrate's office, our team like removes that. the prisoner's handcuffs prior to presenting him before the magistrate for his initial appearance. Are you a resident of this county? Uh, yeah, yeah, I live here. Our evaluator continues to observe as the magistrate okay. reviews the complaint and interviews the prisoner and the arresting officers according to procedure. Once the interview is complete and a bail decision is rendered by the magistrate, Team 210 is released and the exercise is concluded. Okay, team, let's gather up over here. Upon being released, the team will converge once again so that the evaluator can critique their performance during the practical exercise. She thoroughly reviews each of the team members' actions within the scope of the scenario and points out any problem areas that she detected. It's evident that the members of Team 210 have excelled at their training and are well prepared to become outstanding law enforcement officers.